All right, so we're basically at the point where we can put this back into our stick and begin just screwing the all of the wire ends into the proper spots on the PCB under these screw downs. Uh, before we do that though, we need to know which one of these spots I hooked up is which. So uh, this is where the multimeter comes in and you won't need one of these if you just trust yourself and trust what I'm showing you here. But I'm gonna hook up the, uh, this is the ground. So you always wanna have the ground connected to one end. Uh, and then I'm going to see what the red one is. So I'm going to touch these together. It's good that it's not beeping. Whoop. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but they're both touching each other. It's not beeping right now. Uh, so when I push a button here, it should beep telling us that the connection's been made. So it's the, tur the turbo button. And uh, now hopefully this blue, when I push home, it beeps. So it was that easy. Um, so now you know. This blue cable, so the, uh, the lower left spot is your home, and the top right spot is the turbo. So I just need to remember that red is turbo, blue is home, and uh, if you think about it this way, the stick lights up red when you hit turbo. So red wire, I'll remember that. Okay, so you'll just need to screw your uh, turbo board back in place here. The joystick cable, you're not going to hook this back up here. You're going to actually hook this up to the joystick and then to the PCB, the new AkiShop one. Uh, and what I recommend is you put your PCB here. That'll keep it out of the way of the stick. It'll keep it relatively close to where your USB cable is going to be coming in. Uh, and it'll make it easy to... Uh, I don't know, fit, <laughs> really. Uh, the joystick only takes up kind of this area right here, so it's not going to end up hitting it. I tried looking to see if you can get it down here, but that's in the way, and really trying to use these mounts here is not going to work. This thing is kind of big, so I recommend just use uh, some fat 3M double-sided tape. You'll uh, probably, these are pretty long here, the solder points. So you'll probably need two pieces or so to like lift it up, but just double side, double sided tape this guy in here when you're all done, and it should stay. Um, unless you're somebody who flies with your stick, you're taking it to Evo or something. Uh, in that case, what you might want to do is just drill some screw holes here and put some screws in there. But for most people, tape will be fine. Another thing I'm going to recommend is you keep this punch down here for all your wires. If you're somebody who likes to switch out your buttons uh, or just get into the stick from time to time and mess stuff up, um, as you see I've done here. If you leave it, these wires connected to this punch down, when you're opening it up the lid and pulling these off the um, buttons, it's not disturbing the connections between the actual wiring for the new PCB that's going in or any of this stuff. It's just, you know, putting the stress here and keeping it off of the wiring that's going to your PCB. I think that'll um, give you fewer problems in the long run. So to accomplish that, what you're going to want to do is uh, take your ribbon cables, like you see I have done here, uh, and just cut, cut them probably in half. It just needs to reach over. I'm probably going to have some trouble here. So do it longer than I did. Cut it in, cut a quarter off so you don't have too much slack. Uh, and then very simply, assuming this is your good end, uh, take something like an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors and just carefully cut between them where these indentations are. Just get it started and then you can take your fingers and just pull these apart like this so you have some slack between them all. And you're basically turning in these into your own wires and you're going to use these to actually connect up and screw down into the PCB. Lastly, you can go ahead and keep using this joystick connector if you want, um, or you could buy an actual JLF harness. I think they might be about five bucks, maybe less than that. Um, but what you get with this is this actual clip here that when you're connecting it to the stick, you know, locks it in place, and it also helps you align to which side is top. 
These are just some generic connectors um, that just happen to be the right spacing that Mad Cats used. And they don't have any clip that holds it in place. And once you remove this glue, um, it's kind of prone to falling off. Another thing is you can't really tell with the colors of the wires which side is supposed to go up or down. So you could put your stick back together, be trying to use it and the joystick doesn't work or it'll only a couple directions register. Same thing can happen even if you get it on right, it might not be on tight enough. So what I would recommend is you get one of these, but it's not crucial. So um, I'll show you how to install it using this and I'll refer to the, um, which wires are which based on this color coding. But if you're gonna reuse this, just cut it at some point so that you have these wires, um, strip them down so that you got a little tail on them and you can screw it into the AkiShop PCB. You can see here um, on the plate, a good example. I know that this goes on just like this because of this little clip on the top holds it in place and then I know for sure that I have my wires in the right spot. Using this guy, it can go on this way, it can go on this way. The easy way to remember is that the tons of glue is always going to be on top because that's how they connected it, squared a bunch of glue on there. So you can see right here, it's maybe you can see, it's not even really connected all the way and this might not even trigger all the directions. So I've really got to get it on there tight so that you can't see any gap in there. Okay, so I have my start and select buttons connected back up. Um, you probably never disconnected them, so you won't see that, but you, if you have a bunch of this stuff, just kind of curl it up, tuck it back here so it's out of the way for now, so you can really work with what we got going on here. Um, and again, if you're going to go ahead and um, do what I suggested and um, split all these up so that you can easily connect them, you can just pull these ribbon cables off as well. You are not going to get them mixed up because one has uh, six wires and one has five. So what you want to do is just get them so they're like this, and I will put on the screen um, which wire goes to which one, basing it off of this red stripe here that you see, or can hopefully see. Um, so next step really is just connect this guy up to all these wires that we got going on here. One helpful tip when you're doing this is you could either strip it to be a little bit longer uh, than you think you need. You only need about maybe a quarter inch uh, to get in there so strip back a half inch fold it in half to double up the wire to make it a little thicker or really shove it in there so that you get the plastic um, pinched down between what's going to screw down in here and again this oops, see this is where I use the tug test you see that pulled out so really these need to be um, quite thick so I'm going to strip it back a little bit longer And be careful, if you're using scissors like me, don't cut anything too short. Okay, now you can see it's passing the tug test. I'm giving it a pretty good yank. It's not coming out. So that's it. I'm going to do it for the rest of the wires, probably play it and fast forward, uh, and then we'll get to the next step. Okay, so a quick overview of what I just did. This is the larger ribbon cable with six wires here. Uh, the first one was L1, and then it went X, O, R2, L2, and then a ground that I just used this one over here because it's easy to get to. So this next ribbon cable is your um, square triangle R1 start and select, and I'm going to go hook those up. All right, so um, square, triangle, and R1 are in. And this other cable needs to go to the other side for start and select. So I'm just gonna hump it over like this. That'll be fine. Okay, so that's it for the punch down wires. That leaves the turbo and home button with the ground and USB connection as well as the joystick. Uh, if you remember, I nerdily said that the red wire reminded me of the turbo lights, so that's the one that goes into turbo. Uh, the blue, of course, is home. The ground will go into a ground slot here. And then this yellow USB connection will go in the bottom down here where it says VCC.
let's uh, put in the joystick harness. So um, I'll also put this on the screen, uh, starting from the ground down, which one is which, uh, if you're using just the black harness that came with it and you cut off the ends. Um, so I'm just gonna hook these up. Okay, the harness is now connected. I have everything connected. Um, so we need to basically mount this. And as you see, I don't have enough room. So don't do what I did, make these longer. Um, but you're gonna want it over here, like I said. And um, I guess the one thing I am forgetting is your USB cables. So you just plug it in. Um, I'll plug mine in. This is going to stay right here while we test it anyways. I just want to show you that everything works on PS3 and 360. So I'm going to seal it up uh, and then we'll go uh, from there. And here it is pretty much back together. Let's go test it out. All right, let's check this out on the PS3, which it should work on because this was a PS3 stick. Okay, so I have input displays on. So three punches, three kicks works. All three punches at the same time, all three kicks. Uh, let's see if home works. Home works just fine. And start. And uh, select, I'm sure, works. Uh, so there we go. Let's try this out on... Uh, actually, before I do that, let's see the turbo in action. You hold down turbo, push a button, now it's turbo. Alright, so let's go over and look at the Xbox. Okay, if the system doesn't recognize it, what you need to do is hold down turbo while you're putting in the USB cable. There you go, you see it recognizes it. That'll switch it in between either Xbox mode or PlayStation 3 mode. So, uh, I have to hit select to resume the game. And I got all th uh, the three punches work, the three kicks work, all three punches, all three kicks. Guide works. Uh, again, turbo works. And I don't have input display, but I will pull up the options here. And you can see, let's mess these up. Okay, so low punch, medium, high, all three. Low kick, whoop, medium kick, high, all three. All the buttons work. All right, and that's it. So what did we learn? Soldering is not that hard. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. Uh, we also learned that making videos is hard, so props to everybody out there making videos, doing write-ups on how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, and lastly, we also learned if you're going to make a video that you uh, use the sunlight as your uh, extra light here, make sure and finish the video while the light's going on. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's my first video, and uh, I hope you found it helpful.